Hi everyone, it's Dean. This video is part of the making of for our BBA in London project. Uh, we're giving away the model for free as well, so we thought it'd be cool to show you how we put this to use to create the entire film. Okay, so the shot we're going to be looking at today is the map shot, and this shot will eventually, once it's finished, will be this one here. So it's just BB-8 rolling along the road along Oxford Street basically and taking a look at the map to figure out where he is going to go try and find ILM. So this is the original shot that we had. So around about here. Yeah, so there's the guy turning around and then we come down and then we can imagine BB-8 coming through and having a look at the map and then going off to the screen right. So if that's the original footage then we have to go through and track this. So there's lots of different options you could use for a 3D tracker and it takes absolutely ages so I won't go into all the details of them. Um, there's plenty to choose from and there's lots of articles to help you decide which is best for you. So synthize, I mean there's PF track, PF match it. You can actually use After Effects as well if you wish but it's a lot more like basic. Uh, for, it might be a little bit tricky to use it for more like advanced programming exporting into Maya. But ultimately when you do get through into Maya it will look something like this. So here we have our camera in Maya, which has an absolute load of keys on it running from start to finish. And the keys are basically trying to mimic what the camera did in real space. So if I scrub through, you can see that the, the it kind of like tracks through the scene and it tries to, to basically perfectly match what happened in real life. So the result of this, when you look through the camera, and you can see we have a, a flat grid on the floor here, um, and all of the tracking markers as these little locators in the screen, they should all stick. So as I scrub through, you can see that the floor sticks to the real ground throughout the entire shot and the locators stay, stay stuck to the board and stuck to the background and so forth. So let's bring in BB-8 himself. So obviously you don't just bring him in and he's automatically animated. This has taken an artist a lot of work. And, oh, and we do have the um, reflection as well panel here. So for where the actual um, sign is going to be, we have a panel here which was used to, for BB-8 to reflect back in the sign. So this is good because it's useful for the animator to use as a reference point for as well. So let's have a look at BB-8 himself. So BB-8 has a really simple rig on him. Um, it's simply just the, your global SRT to allow him to move around the scene, but in this case it's actually attached to this curve because the curve is controlling his animation, so he, he actually animates along this path. And on top of this, we have uh, offset controllers, uh, rotation controllers for the main ball, and rotation controllers for the head, and that's what really all there is to it. I mean, the, the real work here and the real magic and bringing him to life actually all comes from the animator. Um, so if we look in the graph editor, we can see this is what actually is happening underneath the skin. The curves are driving BB-8's animation. Uh, yeah, Emma, Emma Wilson, uh, she did all the animation for this project. I think she did an amazing job of bringing him to life, especially if we don't have a lot of reference for BB-8's movement and how BB-8 will, will like behave in a scene because obviously the movie uh, wasn't released at the time of making this uh, film. Now we have uh, BB-8 moving in the scene. Uh, let's see what he looks like from the camera view when he's tracked in place. Um, after I've had the animation working, we move on to the lighting. Uh, the good thing about this scene was that um, there wasn't too strong uh, a directional light because if we look around at the HDR environment we have for this, if I bring it in, so if you ever look at the HDR, um, the sun is actually kind of obscured by all the buildings. Um, the sun's actually behind this this building on Oxford Street here. So this entire scene was lit using indirect lighting. Um, but a lot of the time we'll also have a key light to represent the sun just to add stronger shadows. I actually looked developed BB-8 in a different shot. Um, I actually used the palace scene to get the initial um, material properties working. So this is the initial BB-8 render as he comes in with just the diffuse material and just the ambient lighting on him. Um, if I crank up the reflectivity to full, you can see that we actually have him reflecting the HDR environment um, for this specific Buckingham Palace shot um, and then slowly we're starting to work in some more of the details like bringing in the bump map into him here and moving on we want to try and find a compromise between obviously he's not purely reflective we want to see a lot more diffuse coming through um, refining that and to start to see basically you want to see this Fennel effect where he doesn't reflect too much in the middle but he reflects a lot around the edges um, starting to introduce the other materials, so the LEDs and the glass areas. 
and then or I didn't like this blue that was brought in through the textures and for the grey areas. I think that the the lighting on some of the, the preview images we had were, was very blue and so it influenced our texture painting and so we actually like greyed this back a bit. Um, and then obviously we wanted to bring in the bounce light from the floor because this I was going to help embed him a lot stronger into the environment. So you can see the bounces hitting on the underside of his neck. And very importantly you can see that he's starting to bounce onto the floor itself so he's actually lighting up the floor a bit here so with the idea that the light is coming in from this direction bouncing off the ground hitting him and then bouncing back down again and then they just started to refine things a little bit take down some of the subtleties some of the subtle details in his surfacing as you can see this area here like starts to have a bit more reflectivity in it but it has that kind of broken up effect which comes through from the reflectivity map and then working on the motion blur so just quick, some, a few quick tests here just to see how this motion blur was going to work once he started rolling basically. So you can see how we start from very humble beginnings with just lots of refinements and iterations we can eventually reach a, quite a realistic look. But this is only given as a base. We actually are using EXR renders here so we'll have a lot of passes to play with in the final render. Okay, so just referring to this shot specifically, we have everything we need so once this goes through to render we can take a look at what the final result will be. So in After Effects I've pre-cached this. So this is what we get directly from Maya. So we have our render and it's uh, it's working quite good. We've got no popping, we've got no errors of the motion blur, it looks quite nice. So now we're in the comp stage, you have the initial plate here which has been cut down to just the specific section we need. And we can start to bring in BB-8. Now BB-8 is actually got many layers inside of him here which to play with so if I stick extractor on he's not just this single color pass here but we actually have a lot to play with um, in terms of we have the unocclusion pass which is going to help bring in like the soft shadows we have a uh, diffuse pass here which is going to be just the flat colors uh, we have lots of mats which are really useful for cropping out specific parts of BB-8 for instance if I want to change just the plasticky material around his eyes now I have the ability to just crop that section out and uh, one of the most important passes as well as the reflection pass we have here which is just the pure reflection on black so we can screen this back on top to bring in, uh, bring in a lot more brightness into the reflections so this is really useful when we go to comp because what we're able to do now is bring BB-8 in bit by bit so if I bring in just the core color pass here, we can see BB-8 into starting to integrate reasonably well already. He, he's not too bad at all. He, uh, apart from a little bit of roto, which is required. So if you look around this section on the arm here, we needed to roto BB-8 to fit around this section of his hand. So here is the roto shape. So basically going through um, frame by frame and moving this roto shape uh, like one point at a time to track where this hand and this leg go so that BB-8 can be occluded by it and same goes for uh, this section later on when he actually passes slightly behind the sign so we have a roto shape here just to, to occlude him uh, and this same roto shape will be applied to all of his other layers so let's have a look at BB a bit closer to the screen uh, maybe around this section here uh, we can see that we can now start to bring in some of the extra layers. So right now he looks quite uh, flat, you might say. So I wanted to bring in a little bit more uh, reflectivity on him to help like embed him in the environment a bit more and maybe make him feel like he's actually in, in this world. But um, it's almost a bit too strong, so then we kind of like knock things back a bit with the shadow and uh, with using that uh, occlusion pass that we had just to introduce that kind of soft sort of realism to, to the way that the light falls off around his body. The real challenge of this shot is the reflectivity in this sign. The reason being that his reflection should actually be completely on top of this sign, occluding things that are in the background, such as the taxi and the buildings. However, there are certain elements of the sign that need to be added back on again. So this text and this like white line that borders the sign. Um, so let's have a look at the elements of it. So we've got the soft blurry reflection on the base here which again we have uh, animated rotate shape for so again just kind of tracking around this rough area just to make it completely accurate although we do have a 3d object for this it is better just to like refine that in post with a, like a softer edge to show some fall off and uh, same again for this top section so the top part of the reflection as we said has to be completely solid but the issue with that as you can see is that the problem is it doesn't 
look right at all because this sign has just become lost. What there are sections of it here, this like text here and this line which just are completely gone now. So we had to actually re remake that part of it, um, re reproduce this line and this text um, as close as we could, as accurate as we could, and then track this line and this text back on top to match where the original uh, line and the original text would have been. So you can see that it's like quite it matches up quite nicely. So then we can put BB-8 kind of underneath it. And so here we have it, we have the final shot now working with BBA integrated, the reflectivity working, the map tracked back on top of him, and all the roto shapes working quite well. And especially with the motion blur that's going on and the, the camera movement really helps sell this. This shot is without the final grade. Um, I wanted to try and capture a bit of the feel from the original Star Wars films with the grade. So that meant um, bringing in film grain and degrading the quality of the actual footage somewhat. Um, and also kind of bringing in the yellows and softness that you get from a, from like a, a traditional sort of 35 millimeter film. Um, so this is the process just for a single shot. All in all, including the look development, it's well over, I don't know, maybe a week. But um, once the workflow was established, we could probably put out maybe uh, one to two shots a day, uh, including animation, look development, lighting and so forth. Um, it's re so the speed really ramped up near the end of the project. Thanks so much for watching. Please feel free to ask any questions you still have in the comment section on the YouTube video or the blog post or even just hit me up on Twitter and it'd be great to hear from anyone that's interested in the film. Cheers.